Hi everyone, this is Sean with the National Weather Service in Billings. In this short presentation, I will discuss some Doppler weather radar generated velocity products and their uses. The radar has an algorithm built into it that allows it to track where objects are moving with time and how fast they are moving. When objects are moving towards the radar, they register as inbound velocities and appear as cool colors, such as green. When objects are moving away from the radar, they register as outbound velocities and appear as warm colors, such as red. Base velocity products are good at showing straight line winds behind fronts and ahead of thunderstorms. Velocity data also enable us to track low level boundaries where winds abruptly change direction. In this example, the wind is generally blowing west to east and is not very strong as indicated by the dark green colors west of Billings and the dark red colors east of Billings. The white arrow indicates the direction of movement. The legend at the right of the picture shows that the wind speed is measured in knots. The RF in the legend means range folding, which sometimes occurs when the radar cannot determine a wind speed or direction due to interference. Range folded data is not usable data. The ND in the legend means that there is no data available, so wind speed cannot be determined. Velocity products are very useful when determining whether or not a thunderstorm may contain rotation and even a tornado. A very small area where there are both inbound and outbound velocities next to each other indicates that there is circulation or rotation within a storm. In the base velocity image on the left, we can see a small area of circulation within the white circle. Here, inbound velocities, the green colors, are located right next to a region of outbound velocities, the red colors. A base reflectivity image from the same time shows that there is a hook echo, which is also circled in white, where we see the circulation on the base velocity product. This was how low-level base velocity and base reflectivity data appeared at the time of the June 20, 2010 tornado in Billings. Remember that even though we may see these signatures on radar, we still need confirmation of a tornado from the people in the area. Another velocity product that the Doppler radar generates is called storm relative velocity, where the average motion of all storms in the region is subtracted. This gives the viewer a better approximation of the wind field in or near an individual thunderstorm. For this reason, we are able to see circulation within a single thunderstorm better than on base velocity products. In this example, we can see that the circulation is well defined within the thunderstorm that produced the June 20, 2010 Billings tornado. In the white circle, inbound velocities, which appear as the cool blue-green color, are again right next to outbound velocities, which appear as the warm salmon red colors. Thanks for your time. In the next lesson, I will discuss how to interpret precipitation estimate data on the Doppler weather radar. Remember that radar data on our website can be accessed by clicking on the radar image towards the bottom of the main page.